So for our large uh, scale water transfer project, we're going to be looking at the South North Water Transfer Project in China. Now, as the question just showed, uh, we're going to be looking at the pros and cons of this strategy, the advantages and disadvantages, the positive and negative impacts. What we've got here is a very basic layout of uh, or outline of China. You can blame Mr. Sutton for its appearance. I mean, it looks more like a t-shirt, but hey, as long as we remember, it doesn't really matter. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, structure this, okay, so that we have a pipeline splitting down the middle of the country, okay? Now that pipeline obviously serves to remind us that this is a water transfer project. We can draw an arrow in it to show that water is travelling from the south to the north. Okay. Now, the reason why we've put it in the middle is there, that therefore allows us to have positives on one side and negatives on the other. So it provides that immediate divide that we can use to help us structure our answer. Now, the predominant reason for the need for this sort of south to north transfer project in China is that the south acts as an area of rainfall surplus, precipitation surplus. There is low water stress in that area, whereas the north of China receives generally less rainfall, but is also predominantly the highly populated area. Okay, particularly in the areas towards the northeast, we see an area of particularly high water stress. So we can mark that like that, WS. Um, you know, in this area, you'd find cities such as Beijing. Okay, very large populations. Okay, um, mega cities. So obviously, the demand on the water is going to be huge, and it's in an area where predominantly there is little rainfall. Also, this part of China not only having the largest population, but also uh, is the predominant area for agriculture in China, and therefore again high water usage. So let's have a look then, starting off with the positives of the South North Water Transfer Project. Um, you know, it's a pretty impressive scheme. Okay, we're looking at transferring somewhere around 12 trillion litres of water every year from that area of, as I said, water surplus or low water stress in the north to that area of water deficit or high water stress. Also, that water is therefore used to provide economic growth for China. That water provides the necessary coolant for a huge number of energy plants and also to uh, run heavy industry factories in the north of China. On top of that, it provides social benefits, predominantly by providing clean, safe drinking water to over 20 conurbations or large cities. And then, in addition, again, this kind of links into both an environmental and an economic uh, positive. The, the water that's transferred to the north has allowed uh, that part of China to develop from a predominantly subsistence farming area to an area that sees quite significant commercial farming. And due to irrigation of the land from the water that's transferred from the south to the north. So we can see a really large scale transfer project that has had both social, economic and environmental slash economic benefits for the north of China. However, we do need to consider the negatives of the strategy. Firstly, economically wise, it's been an incredible cost. Okay? We're looking at costs of around $79 billion and the transfer project hasn't been fully completed yet. So spot costs have kind of spiralled out of control and that's had knock on impacts for people living in both South and Northern China um, who have to pay higher taxes and water bills to cover the shortfall that the government has in funding the project. On top of that, what we've seen is a huge number of rural communities displaced from the north, uh, from the, the route from the south to the north. You know, the pipelines, the pumping stations have also had to be built somewhere, and they've resulted in over 300,000 people being displaced from their rural villages and homes and losing their farmland, etc., to make room for these constructions. On top of that, though it does transfer a huge amount of water, a significant amount of the water is actually lost okay, as it travels through canals. I can show you that with a, a pretty basic canal boat. Okay. A huge amount of that water is lost to evaporation, meaning that the scheme actually isn't as uh, effective as it should be. And as a result of that, the, the transfer scheme has to take more water from the south to make up for the huge amount of water that is lost by evaporation. This is actually now starting to create 
a growing pressure on the water supply and we are actually starting to see low water stress in the south. An area that had been predominantly not had any issues with this is now struggling to provide the water that it needs because so much has been taken for the north and to replace that water that's being lost. Environmentally as well, we must consider the destruction of habitats that the pipeline has created. Like any water transfer scheme, we talked about ones in the UK transferring water from the northwest to the southeast. Now we are going to see a loss of biodiversity, vegetation, wildlife habitats and so on. So what we've got is a really clear positive, and we allow we can classify those as social and economic positives. Okay, but we also have some quite clear social, economic, and environmental negatives. So in the exam, you know, you're going to have to consider those arguments and move between the two of them, and then come up with a conclusion. In your opinion, do you think it's a success or not?